Okay, so in this video, um, we really don't have any new theory to introduce here. This particular exercise that I'm going to direct you to at the end of this video um, really just looks at a whole variety of problems involving integrals and antiderivatives and areas under curves and mixing up all your functions, etc. So it's really just about starting to bring everything together. We'll just work through one example together um, so before you can then go on and work on the exercise. Um, if you'd like, um, it might be a good idea to, to actually pause this video, have a go at working through this on your own, and then you can come back and, and um, see how you went, if, you, um, if that would help. Um, okay, so let's do this. Example 1. Assume y varies with x according to the rule y equals a times x to the power of n, and that y equals 2.5 when x equals 10, and y equals 1.25 when x equals 20. So part a is to find the values of a and n. Okay, so we've essentially been given two points on the equation. We've got two unknowns, so we can find um, a and n that way. Um, obviously, if we've got our CAS, it's a pretty easy substitution and solve the simultaneous equations if we set it up right. Um, but I think the numbers here should enable us to do it um, by hand reasonably easy, easily. Okay, so let's up the first point in. So we know when um, x is 10, y is 2.5. So that's going to give us 2.5 equals a times 10 to the power of n. Okay, and then the second bit of information, y equals 1.25 when x equals 20. So 1.25 equals a times 10 to the power of, sorry, 20 to the power of n. Okay, so we've got simultaneous equations to solve here. The easiest way to solve equations of this form would be to divide equation 1 and equation 2 because that would eliminate a. So if we do equation 1 divided by equation 2, we're going to get 2.5 over 1.25, which is 2, um, and then we get a times 10 to the n over a times 20 to the n. Okay, So the a's are going to cancel out, we can have 2 over here, and actually on the right hand side what we've got there essentially is 10 on 20 all to the power of n. So we've got 2 equals half to the n, so that is 2 equals 2 to the negative n, and so therefore uh, negative n equals 1 and n equals negative 1. Okay, so that's n. Then once we've got n, we now know our equation is y equals ax to the negative 1, and we can um, sub in one of these points to find the value of a, so whichever you prefer. So remember this is a on x. Okay, so let's say uh, when y is 2.5, a is um, 10, uh, and then, sorry, x is 10, and then we can solve for a just by multiplying by 10. So a is 25. So therefore the equation is 25 on x, or 25x to the negative 1. Oops, sorry, might write it both ways. We can probably possibly think of the antiderivative better that way, it's up to you. Okay, so then we want to evaluate the integral from 10 to 50 of y. Okay, so this is the integral from 10 to 50 of 25 on x. Okay, remember 25 on x is just 25 times the integral from 1 to 50 of 1 on x. Alright, so antiderivative of 1 on x is log e of x from 10 to 50. So we have 25 times log e of, now the modulus of 50, the absolute value of 50 is just 50 because it's already positive take away log e again, the absolute value of 10 is just 10. Okay, so we've got 25 times, we can subtract those logs by doing division, it's going to be log e of 50 divided by 10, so log e of 5. Alright, so we've evaluated the integral. And then part c, find the value of k such that the integral of y from 10 to k is equal to 25. Okay, so let's have a think about what we've got here. So from 10 to k of sorry, 25 on x is to equal 25. Now once again, like we did before, we can take the 25 out here and then what we can do here is divide both sides of the equation by 25. So actually what we have here is the integral from 10 to k of 1 on x is equal to 1. Okay, dividing both sides by 25. Antiderivative of 1 on x is log e of x from 10 to k has to equal 1. Okay. Uh, now it does tell us that, oh, I'll come back to that actually. So we've got log e of absolute value of k minus log e of absolute value of 10, which is just 10, equals 1. 
Now, the other thing we notice is that k has to be positive, so therefore the absolute value of a positive number is still just going to be the absolute value of that number. So we can ignore the absolute value signs. Okay, so we're subtracting logs again. So log e of k divided by 10 is equal to 1. And now we can change it to an exponential equation. So k over 10 equals e to the power of 1. And so therefore k equals 10e. That's our answer there. Okay, so just one example. Again, it really just requires knowledge of integrals. Um, also, though, some exponential functions. So again, everything kind of coming together and obviously some log laws along the way. So there's quite a lot of questions here. It's just a really good mixture of stuff um, bringing all sorts of ideas together in the one exercise.